You know, there's something about the mountains that has always intrigued me. Their majestic beauty, the way they stand like ancient sentinels guarding the secrets of the earth. So when my friends suggested a weekend hiking trip, I couldn't resist the idea. Little did we know that this trip would lead us to an eerie discovery that would send shivers down our spines. It all began on a crisp Saturday morning. The sun hung low in the sky, casting long shadows on the rugged terrain as we set out on our journey. There were four of us, close friends seeking adventure and a break from the daily grind. Dave, Sarah, Mark, and me. We were the perfect team for this escapade. The hike was grueling, with steep inclines, rocky trails, and the occasional thorny underbrush. But the breathtaking views of the rolling mountainsides and the serene valleys below kept our spirits high. We trekked for hours. The exhilarating feeling of being surrounded by nature's raw beauty, fueling our determination. As the sun began its descent, we found ourselves in an area that felt different, almost as if the very air had changed. The forest was dense here, the trees towering over us, blocking out the remaining sunlight. We were getting deeper into the mountains, far from any known trails, but our adventurous spirit pushed us forward. Just as the light was about to fade completely, Mark, the most observant of us, spotted something out of the corner of his eye. He signaled for us to stop and pointed to a narrow path veering off the main trail. The path was barely visible, covered in underbrush and overgrown vegetation, but it led us to a discovery that would change our lives forever. Curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to follow this hidden trail. The winding path led us deeper into the woods, and the temperature seemed to drop significantly. Our surroundings grew darker and more oppressive with each step. We had no idea where this path would lead, but the sense of adventure was too strong to ignore. The forest closed in around us, the branches overhead forming an eerie, twisted canopy. It felt like we were entering a world untouched by time. The path eventually opened up to reveal a hidden clearing. And there, nestled among the trees, stood a village. But it wasn't just any village. It was something out of a forgotten era. The houses were made of weathered wood and stone, and they had a distinct old-world charm that sent chills down our spines. As we approached, we noticed something peculiar. The village was completely silent, not a single soul in sight. The houses, though quaint and picturesque, seemed abandoned. The windows were dark and the doors were tightly shut. We exchanged uneasy glances, a sense of foreboding settling over us. The village square was dominated by a large, gnarled tree that looked like it had been there for centuries. A well stood in the center, its water still, untouched by any living creature. There was an eerie stillness in the air broken only by the distant rustling of leaves and the occasional call of a crow. We hesitated, unsure of what to do next. Should we explore further or turn back? But the allure of this enigmatic village was too strong to resist. We decided to investigate the houses, hoping to find some sign of life or answers to the mysteries of this place. The first house we entered was filled with relics of another time, old books, faded photographs, and dusty furniture that had seen better days. It was as if the inhabitants had simply vanished, leaving their possessions behind. There was an unsettling feeling in the air, like we were intruding on something sacred. The second house was no different, and neither was the third. It was as if time had frozen in this village, preserving it in a state of eerie abandonment we began to feel a growing sense of unease, like we were being watched by unseen eyes. The fourth house, however, held a discovery that would send shivers down our spines. In one of the rooms, hidden behind a heavy, moth-eaten curtain, we found a journal. Its pages were yellowed with age, and its ink had faded, but we could still make out the words. The journal was filled with entries, the last one dated over a century ago. It belonged to a resident of the village, a person who described the strange happenings in the village, 
the unexplained disappearances, and the feeling of being trapped in a nightmare. It spoke of something lurking in the forest, something that the villagers had feared for generations. As we read the chilling entries, a sudden realization washed over us. We were not alone in this village. The ghostly presence of its long-departed inhabitants seemed to linger, and the unsettling silence that enveloped us took on a new, sinister meaning. In the fading light of the day, we made a decision. We had to find out the truth behind this village, the mystery that had held it captive for centuries. We knew that our lives were about to change in ways we couldn't even imagine. And so, with the journal as our guide, we set out on a quest to uncover the secrets of the hidden village in the mountains, unaware of the horrors that awaited us in the shadows of the past. As we delved deeper into the abandoned village, the weight of history and mystery hung heavily in the air. The journal we had discovered in the last house had hinted at something sinister lurking in the forest, and that knowledge gnawed at the edges of our curiosity. With fading daylight, the village's shadows grew longer and more menacing. We moved as a group, our flashlights casting erratic beams of light, illuminating the cobbled pathways and crooked buildings. The silence remained, unbroken by the chirping of crickets or the rustling of leaves. We decided to investigate the village's center, where the massive tree stood, casting eerie, elongated shadows in the moonlight. There was something about that tree, its gnarled branches reached out like skeletal fingers, as if it held secrets buried in the roots below. The village well stood nearby. It surfaced like a dark, undisturbed mirror. Despite the cool breeze that rustled the leaves around us, not a single ripple marred the water's surface. It was as if the village had been caught in time, frozen in its own silent horror. As we gathered around the well, our flashlights flickering in the darkness, a whispered murmur of voices reached our ears. Faint and distant, like a ghostly echo, we strained to hear the words. The voices seemed to come from the very well itself, an otherworldly chorus that sent shivers down our spines. Dave leaned closer to the well, his voice trembling. Sarah nodded, her face pale. But there's no one here. It's impossible. I couldn't deny it. The voices were undeniable, and they seemed to be growing stronger. As if they were reaching out to us, the words were still indistinct. But there was an urgency to them, a plea that tugged at our curiosity. In that moment, Mark, who had been unusually quiet, suddenly spoke up. His suggestion sent a chill down our spines. The well with its still dark water and the eerie voices emanating from its depths, had become the epicenter of our fear. But the journal's cryptic entries had guided us here, and our sense of adventure outweighed our trepidation. We carefully shone our flashlights into the well, and what we saw made our hearts race. There, at the bottom, lay a chamber hidden beneath the water's surface. Ancient stones formed an entrance, and the voices seemed to be emanating from within. The chamber was submerged, but we could make out the opening, leading to who knew what depths. The whispers grew more insistent, as if urging us to uncover the truth hidden beneath the surface. I could feel my pulse quicken as I exchanged nervous glances with my friends. We had come this far, and we couldn't turn back now. With a collective breath, we made the decision to descend into the well following the voices that beckoned us from the depths below. Dave, ever the bravest among us, took the first step, carefully lowering himself into the water, followed by Sarah, Mark, and me. As we submerged into the hidden chamber, the voices enveloped us, the words becoming clearer with each descent. They spoke of ancient rituals, of a darkness that had plagued the village for generations and of a hidden power that had brought ruin to all who had come before us. The chamber's walls were adorned with cryptic symbols, and strange, flickering lights danced in the water. We pressed forward, our hearts pounding, determined to uncover the secrets that had haunted this place for so long. The passageway led us deeper underground, and with each step, the whispers grew louder, 
filling our ears with an otherworldly symphony. It was as if the very walls themselves were alive, resonating with the stories of those who had come before us. And then, at the end of the passage, we reached a chamber bathed in an eerie blue light. The source of the whispers became clear. A collection of ancient, ornate stones rested at the center. They pulsed with an otherworldly energy, their inscriptions telling a story of despair and sacrifice. As we approached the stones, the whispers coalesced into a single voice, a voice that seemed to emanate from the very walls around us. It spoke of a curse that had plagued the village, a curse that required a sacrifice to be broken. We were caught in a moment of dreadful realization. The villagers of this forsaken place had been trapped in a cycle of despair, unable to break free from the darkness that had gripped them. And now, it seemed, it was our turn to make a choice, to carry on the curse or to end it once and for all. The stones, imbued with ancient power, offered us a choice, to make the ultimate sacrifice, to end the curse, or to turn back and leave this village to its grim fate. As we stood there surrounded by the whispers of the past, we knew that our decision would shape the destiny of this haunted place. In the hushed chamber beneath the village, we faced a choice that would challenge our courage, our loyalty, and our humanity. And as we deliberated, the voices of the past watched and waited, their secrets buried in the depths of time. The chamber beneath the village held its secrets close, and the echoes of ancient whispers reverberated through the air as we stood at the precipice of a choice that would forever bind our fates to this forsaken place. We could feel the weight of centuries pressing down on us, a history of sorrow, darkness, and unanswered questions. The stones at the center of the chamber pulsed with an eerie light, their inscriptions seemingly urging us to make a decision. As we contemplated the choices before us, the voice of the past whispered to break the curse. You must make a sacrifice. The words were chilling, and a heavy silence settled over us as we tried to decipher their meaning. Dave, always the rational thinker, was the first to speak. A sacrifice. What does that mean? Are we supposed to give up something precious? The stones remained inscrutable, their ancient engravings providing no clear guidance. The choice felt like an impossible riddle, and the walls of the chamber seemed to press in on us, urging us to make a decision. Mark, ever the curious one, stepped closer to the stones. Could the sacrifice be a symbolic one, rather than something physical? Maybe we need to let go of our fear or doubts. The stones flickered in response, and the whispers grew more insistent. Sarah, with a shiver running down her spine, said, I can't help but think of the village's history, of all those who suffered here. Maybe the sacrifice is to remember them, to honor their memory. As I considered their words, a profound realization began to take shape. The curse that had plagued this village for generations was not born of malevolence, but of despair, the result of lives lived in fear, forgotten and abandoned by the world. The stones illuminated with a bluish intensity, as if acknowledging our understanding. The voice of the past echoed once more to end the curse. You must release it from the depths of your own hearts. In that moment, it became clear. The sacrifice required was not a physical one, but an emotional one. We had to confront the darkness that lay within us, the doubts, the fears, and the unresolved questions that had haunted us. Dave, with determination in his eyes, spoke first. I'll start. I've carried the weight of my own doubts for far too long. I'll let them go, here in this chamber. Sarah nodded, her voice steady. I've been haunted by my past mistakes, by the people I've hurt unintentionally. I'll release that guilt and forgive myself. Mark, with a sense of catharsis, admitted, I've always feared the unknown. I'll face my fear head. On and let go of the uncertainty that's held me back. I, too, bared my soul. I've carried the weight of my own curiosity, my need for answers. 
I'll accept that some mysteries may never be solved and release my need for control. As each of us spoke, the stones radiated with a brilliant blinding light, and the chamber reverberated with a sense of release. The whispers of the past grew louder, filling the chamber with a chorus of voices, until they finally faded into silence. We had made our emotional sacrifices, and as we looked around, we realized that the chamber had transformed. The eerie light had dimmed, and the stones at its center were now dark and cold. The curse that had held the village in its grip for generations had been broken. The weight of sorrow and despair that had lingered for centuries had lifted, and in its place, a sense of peace settled over us. Our choice, guided by understanding and empathy, had not only freed the village, but also ourselves. We had uncovered the truth hidden in the depths of time, and in doing so, we had found our own redemption. As we made our way back to the surface, the village seemed different. The once silent streets were now filled with the sounds of life, laughter, and joy. The villagers, who had long lived in fear and isolation, welcomed us with open arms. The darkness that had shrouded the village had dissipated, and in its place, a sense of hope and renewal had taken hold. The hidden village in the mountains was no longer haunted by its past, and we, the unwitting travelers who had stumbled upon it, had played a part in its transformation. The story of the hidden village, with its secrets buried in the depth of time, had come to a satisfying and heartwarming conclusion. And as we looked back on our journey, we couldn't help but feel a profound sense of fulfillment, knowing that we had made a difference in a place where darkness had once reigned. Our adventure had led us to uncover the truth hidden beneath the surface, to break the cycle of despair, and to bring about a new beginning for a village that had long yearned for it. And in doing so, we had found our own redemption, a sense of closure, and a bond that would forever bind us to the hidden village in the mountains. With the curse lifted and the hidden village basking in newfound light, we couldn't shake the feeling that there were still secrets buried in the depths of mountains. Our insatiable curiosity led us to explore further, to uncover the mysteries that had remained hidden for centuries. As we delved deeper into the village, we noticed a trail that led to a path less traveled. The villagers spoke in hushed tones of an ancient shrine, a place they had feared to approach. It was said to hold the key to the village's history, a history that was shrouded in darkness. We embarked on this journey together, our bond strengthened by the shared experience of breaking the curse. The path to the shrine was overgrown, and the air was thick with a sense of foreboding. We could feel the weight of history bearing down on us, as if the very mountains whispered their secrets. The shrine emerged before us, a structure weathered by time and hidden from the world. Its stone walls were adorned with symbols and inscriptions that spoke of a forgotten era. The air inside was heavy with the scent of incense, and the only source of light was a flickering candle at the center of the room. We approached cautiously, our footsteps echoing through the chamber. The shrine held artifacts of a bygone age, ancient scrolls, and intricate carvings that depicted scenes of a lifelong past. It was as if we had stumbled upon a portal to another time. As we examined the artifacts, our eyes fell upon a weathered tome. Its pages were brittle with age, and its contents were written in a language unknown to us. It seemed to be a journal, a chronicle of the village's history, and it held the key to the secrets that had been buried for centuries. The journal's first entry spoke of a thriving village, a community that had flourished in the heart of the mountains. It told of a people who had lived in harmony with the land, who had revered the spirits of the mountains and the forests. But as we read on, the tone of the journal shifted, and a sense of unease settled over us. The entries began to recount tales of a darkness that had taken hold of the village, a darkness that had torn families apart and sown the seeds of fear and mistrust. The villagers had turned to the shrine in their desperation, seeking answers and a way to break the curse that had befallen them. 
The journal's final entry told of a ritual, a desperate attempt to appease the spirits of the mountains and lift the curse. It spoke of a sacrifice, a choice that had been made to save the village, but at a great cost. The details of the sacrifice remained shrouded in mystery, but it was clear that the villagers had paid a heavy price to break the curse that had plagued them. As we closed the journal, a sense of sadness washed over us. The secrets of the hidden village were now unveiled, and the weight of its history bore down on our shoulders. The darkness that had once consumed the village was now understood, and the sacrifices made by its people were acknowledged. We couldn't help but feel a sense of connection to the villagers who had lived in this place, who had faced the same choices and fears that we had. In breaking the curse, we had not only freed the village, but had also brought closure to a chapter in its history. As we left the shrine and made our way back to the village, we carried with us the knowledge of the past. The hidden village in the mountains had shared its secrets with us, and in return, we had offered it redemption and a chance to begin anew. Our journey had taken us deep into the heart of a forgotten world, and as we looked back at the hidden village, we couldn't help but feel a sense of fulfillment. We had uncovered the mysteries buried in the mountains, and in doing so, we had become a part of its history, a part of its redemption. The hidden village had unveiled its secrets, and in the process, it had revealed a part of our own souls. We had come in search of answers, and in the end, we had found not only the truth, but also a profound connection to a place that would forever remain etched in our hearts. Our exploration of the hidden village in the mountains had brought us face to face with its secrets and a profound connection to its history. As we continued our journey, we couldn't escape the lingering feeling that the past still held sway over the present, and the village had more to reveal. The villagers welcomed us with open arms, grateful for the curse's end and the newfound prosperity that graced their lives. The once desolate fields now flourished with crops, and the harbor teemed with fishing boats, a stark contrast to the desolation we had witnessed before. Despite the village's transformation, a sense of unease still haunted us. It was as though the shadows of the past refused to fade, and the curse's remnants lingered in the whispers of the wind and the rustle of leaves. We knew that our journey was far from over, and the hidden village had more to share. In our quest for answers, we delved deeper into the village's history. The villagers, once hesitant to discuss their past, gradually opened up and shared their stories. It was through these accounts that we pieced together the full extent of the village's suffering. The curse that had befallen them was linked to a dark chapter in their history, a time when fear and mistrust had torn families apart. It was said that the village had been home to a close-knit community that revered the spirits of the mountains and the forests. They had thrived in harmony with nature, living off the land and celebrating the changing seasons. But as the years passed, a darkness began to seep into the village. Whispers of forbidden rituals and shadowy figures in the woods haunted their nights. Families turned against one another, and mistrust poisoned the once, strong bonds of the community. In their desperation, the villagers had turned to the shrine we had discovered, seeking a way to break the curse that had consumed them. It was there that they had made a solemn pact, a sacrifice that had forever altered the course of their lives. The sacrifices they had offered to appease the spirits of the mountains were sacrifices of their own flesh and blood. The villagers had chosen to part with their loved ones, to send them into the heart of the mountains, believing it was the only way to break the curse's hold. The weight of their choices had left a scar on the village, a scar that still lingered in the hearts of its people. We listened to their stories, the tales of families torn apart and lives forever changed. It was a haunting reminder of the price they had paid to break the curse, a price that had left a void in their souls. As we delved deeper into the village's past, we uncovered relics of the sacrifices made. Hidden in the mountains were unmarked graves, a testament to the lives lost in their desperate bid for redemption. The villagers had buried their secrets and their sorrow, hoping that time would heal their wounds. 
The echoes of the past resonated in the whispers of the wind, the rustle of leaves, and the quiet sobs of those who still mourned their lost loved ones. The hidden village had been touched by darkness, but it had also shown resilience and the strength to rebuild. Our journey was a reminder that the past could never truly be buried. It lingered in the memories of those who had lived through it and in the land itself, which bore witness to their sacrifices. The hidden village had shared its history with us, and we had become keepers of its tales. As we left the village behind, we carried with us not only the knowledge of its past, but also a sense of responsibility. The echoes of the hidden village's history would forever remain with us, a reminder of the enduring bond between the past and the present. Our journey had unveiled the secrets of the hidden village, but it had also unveiled a deeper truth about the human spirit. The villagers had faced darkness and despair, but they had found the strength to rebuild their lives and their community. The hidden village had taught us that even in the face of the darkest of curses, there was always a glimmer of hope. It was a lesson we would carry with us, a reminder that the past could be a source of strength and that redemption was possible even in the most unlikely of places. As we continued our journey after leaving the hidden village, a sense of unease lingered in the air. The revelations we had uncovered about the village's past had left us with more questions than answers. We couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story, hidden in the depths of the mountains. Our travels took us deeper into the rugged terrain, where the dense forest thickened and the air grew heavy with mystery. The mountains seemed to hold their secrets close, as if guarding them against prying eyes. But we were determined to uncover the truth no matter the cost. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and cast long shadows over the landscape, we stumbled upon an old weathered map. It was a map of the mountains, and it bore markings that hinted at hidden passages in uncharted territories. We knew that this discovery held the key to unraveling the mysteries that still surrounded the hidden village. With the map in hand, we set out to explore the uncharted regions of the mountains. The terrain was unforgiving, and the paths grew narrower and steeper. Yet, our determination pushed us forward, driven by the need to understand the full extent of the curse that had plagued the village. As we ventured deeper into the mountains, we encountered signs of a hidden world, one that had remained untouched by time. We stumbled upon ancient shrines, their stones covered in moss and their inscriptions faded with age. These shrines bore symbols and engravings that hinted at a connection to the village's past. We followed the trail of these shrines, each one leading us further into the heart of the mountains. It was as if the mountains themselves were guiding us, urging us to uncover their long-held secrets. With each step, the sense of foreboding grew stronger, and we knew that we were edging closer to the truth. One evening, as we set up camp in a secluded clearing, we noticed a change in the air. It had grown colder, and a chill settled over the landscape. The wind carried whispers that seemed to come from all directions, and we couldn't discern their source. It was as if the very mountains were speaking to us, revealing their secrets in hushed tones. That night, as we sat around the campfire, the shadows danced eerily in the flickering light. We couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that something ancient and powerful was observing our every move. The sense of dread was palpable, and we knew that we were on the cusp of a profound revelation. As we delved deeper into our research, we uncovered legends and folklore that spoke of a powerful entity that had long been associated with the mountains. This entity was said to be the guardian of the land, a being with the power to shape the destiny of the village and its people. The legends described rituals and offerings made to appease this guardian, to seek its protection and guidance. It was through these rituals that the village had maintained its harmony with the mountains, ensuring bountiful harvests and peaceful existence. But as we delved further into the legends, we stumbled upon a darker truth. It was said that the Guardian could also be a force of destruction, capable of unleashing curses and calamities upon the land. 
The balance between its benevolence and wrath was delicate, and it could be swayed by the actions of the villagers. We realized that the curse that had befallen the hidden village was not merely a random act of misfortune. It was a consequence of a pact made with the Guardian. The sacrifices offered by the villagers had been an attempt to appease this powerful entity, to break the curse's hold on their lives. With this revelation, we understood that the key to lifting the curse lay in confronting the Guardian of the Mountains. We were determined to seek an audience with this ancient force, to understand its desires and find a way to bring peace to the hidden village. As we continued our journey through the mountains, the sense of anticipation grew. We knew that the Guardian held the answers we sought and that our quest was far from over. The mountains themselves seemed to guide us toward our destiny, and we were ready to unveil the truth that had been hidden for centuries. Our quest to confront the Guardian of the Mountains led us deeper into the rugged terrain, where ancient shrines and cryptic inscriptions marked our path. The mountains themselves seemed to guide us, urging us toward our destiny, and the anticipation in the air was thick with foreboding. As we ventured further into uncharted territory, the landscape grew more treacherous. The narrow paths and steep cliffs tested our resolve, but we were determined to uncover the truth and lift the curse that had plagued the hidden village for generations. One day, as we followed the trail of the ancient shrines, we stumbled upon a cavern entrance concealed behind a waterfall. The water cascaded down like a silver veil, hiding the entrance from plain view. It was as if the mountains themselves were guarding this hidden passage. With a sense of trepidation and excitement, we entered the cavern. The air inside was cool and damp, and the sound of dripping water echoed through the rocky chambers. Our flashlight beams cut through the darkness, revealing intricate carvings on the cavern walls. The carvings depicted scenes of villagers making offerings to an imposing figure, the Guardian of the Mountains. The figure's form was shrouded in mystery, and its eyes seemed to follow our every move. It was a chilling reminder of the entity we sought to confront. Deeper into the cavern, we discovered a chamber filled with relics and offerings. Rusty weapons, talismans, and faded parchment scrolls littered the ground. It was as if the villagers had left these items behind as a plea for forgiveness from the Guardian. We also found a series of scrolls that contained incantations and rituals, the very means by which the villagers had sought to appease the Guardian's wrath. The chants were written in a language that none of us recognized, and the symbols were arcane and unfamiliar. With the scrolls in hand, we pressed forward, determined to find the Guardian and seek an audience. The path led us to a vast chamber, where an altar stood at the center. It was adorned with offerings of food, flowers, and candles, as if someone had been tending to it even after the villagers had left. As we approached the altar, a sensation of being watched descended upon us. The air grew colder, and a presence seemed to materialize in the chamber. We shone our flashlights in all directions, but the source of this eerie feeling remained hidden. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the chamber, resonating with an otherworldly power. It was a voice that seemed to emanate from the very stones of the mountains, and it filled our minds with a profound sense of awe and dread. Why have you come? The voice inquired, its tone both ancient and stern. It was as if the guardian of the mountains had awakened from a deep slumber to address our presence. With a mixture of apprehension and resolve, I stepped forward and replied, we seek to understand the truth and to bring an end to the curse that has befallen the hidden village. We wish to understand your desires and to find a way to restore balance. The chamber grew still as the voice responded. The balance between benevolence and wrath is delicate, and the actions of the villagers have swayed the scales. The curse that befalls them is a consequence of their choices. To lift the curse, they must make amends and seek forgiveness. The revelation was both a glimmer of hope and a weighty responsibility. The Guardian's words indicated that there was a path to redemption, but it would require the villagers to acknowledge their actions and make sincere efforts to restore balance. We left the chamber with a sense of purpose. 
Armed with the knowledge we had gained, our journey back to the hidden village was filled with reflection and contemplation. We knew that the road ahead would be challenging, but we were determined to help the villagers find a way to lift the curse that had plagued them for so long. As we emerged from the cavern and back into the mountains, we couldn't help but feel a sense of connection with the Guardian. The mountains had revealed their secrets to us, and we were now entrusted with the task of bringing the hidden village back into harmony with the ancient entity that watched over the land. Our path was clear and our resolve unwavering. We would return to the hidden village and share the Guardian's message, hoping that the villagers would find the courage to make amends and seek forgiveness for the choices that had led to their curse. The mountains had spoken, and it was time for the villagers to listen. The journey back to the hidden village was fraught with anticipation and a sense of urgency. The burden of the Guardian's message weighed heavily on our shoulders as we navigated the rugged terrain of the mountains. It was not just a path of physical return, but also a path of redemption and renewal. As we approached the village, we could see that the atmosphere had shifted. The pall of despair that had hung over the villagers for so long seemed to have lifted, replaced by a glimmer of hope. Word of our encounter with the Guardian had spread, and the villagers were gathering at the heart of the settlement, waiting for our return. With a heavy heart, I stepped forward to address the villagers, my voice carrying the weight of our mission. I recounted our journey, the mysterious guardian, and the message that had been imparted to us. The villagers listened in rapt attention, their faces a mix of hope, fear, and uncertainty. I explained that the curse that had befallen their village was a result of the choices made by their ancestors and the actions of the villagers themselves. The Guardian had offered a path to redemption, a chance to make amends and seek forgiveness. It was not a journey that could be undertaken alone, but one that required the collective efforts of the entire community. The villagers had to acknowledge the wrongs of the past, rectify their actions, and find a way to restore balance with the Guardian of the Mountains. The atmosphere in the village was charged with emotion as the reality of the task ahead sank in. It was a daunting path, one that would demand reflection, accountability, and sincere efforts to amend the mistakes of the past. But the villagers were determined to face the challenge head on. In the days that followed, the hidden village transformed. The villagers came together to restore the ancient shrines, tend to the neglected offerings, and engage in acts of kindness and goodwill. They sought to heal the wounds that had festered for generations mending the bonds of their community. As they worked together, the curse that had plagued their land began to wane. The harsh storms that had once raged with fury grew gentler, and the mountains themselves seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. Nature responded to the villagers' efforts to restore balance, and the world around them transformed. The hidden village, once shrouded in darkness and fear, now bathed in the warm glow of redemption. The guardian of the mountains, the ancient entity that had watched over the land for centuries, seemed to approve of the villagers' earnest attempts to seek forgiveness. The story of the hidden village in the mountains became a tale of redemption and renewal, a testament to the power of collective action and the human capacity to make amends for the mistakes of the past. The curse was lifted, and the villagers found themselves in harmony with the guardian. In the end, the hidden village was no longer hidden, but a place of healing and renewal. The mountains stood tall and majestic, their secrets shared with those who had learned the value of balance and redemption. As we prepared to leave the hidden village behind, the villagers gathered to express their gratitude. The once forbidding terrain of the mountains now felt like a place of hope and transformation. We had played our part in this journey of redemption, and the memory of our encounter with the Guardian would forever be etched in our hearts. The hidden village, once lost to the world, had found its way back into the light, and the Guardian of the Mountains watched over it with a benevolent gaze. Our footsteps carried us away from this place, but the lessons we had learned and the bonds we had forged would remain with us, a reminder of the power of redemption and the enduring connection between humans and the mysteries of the natural world.
Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.